morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk this morning about how you build a 34-story wind turbine and a few tips on how not to build a 34-story windmill. <laughs> the first thing you do is you start out and find a very, very windy spot. In our case, we found Tehachapi, California. It's about 120 miles north of Los Angeles. Um, it's windy in Tehachapi because it's very hot in the Mojave Desert. And as the heat rises, it sucks the cooler air through the Tehachapi Pass and causes Tehachapi to be a windy spot. And if you look at the, um, the foliage in Tehachapi, you'll see that there's a lot of trees that have what we call flagging. The branches are all growing in the same direction, and that's a very good sign. Um, what we do is we put up an anemometer, which is the uh, device you see on the left. It's on a 50-meter tower. It's got a measuring cup, a weather vane, and a little computer that records uh, the wind speeds. And then we'll also use a SODAR unit, which is the unit on the right. And it sends an acoustic signal up about four or 500 feet so that we can get a sense of what the wind is going to be like on the entire rotor. And we measure that wind for at least a year. And while we're doing that, we carry out studies on birds, bats, bees, and whatnot. We don't want to kill California condors or golden eagles, and we don't want to dig up native burial sites. We don't want to be too close to airports or whatever the case may be. And after a year or so, you get your permit and you select a site. And there I am standing on the site where we're going to build our windmill today. People say to me all the time, can I have a windmill like this in my backyard? And I say, well, you could, except each of these turbines costs between three and four million dollars. So you have to use a heck of a lot of electricity to make it worthwhile. And the other thing is these sites are incredibly windy. This site in Tehachapi has an annual average of about 20 miles an hour. Um, a couple of years back, we had an hourly average of 122 miles an hour. A panel truck was turned on its side, and this is a true story. An outhouse that was held down with six guy wires went 50 feet down the road. Wasn't a good day for the guy that was in it. <laughs> so anyway, now we're going to dig our hole and build our foundation. This is 20 feet uh, wide and 40 feet deep. Into that foundation, we're going to stick a rebar cage, we're going to put a sleeve around it, and we're going to put lots of concrete in it to anchor it down in the ground really solidly. The reason you want a solid foundation is if you don't, bad things can happen. You don't want to build a windmill with a, an, a shallow foundation because it doesn't work that well horizontally. <laughs> Back in the 80s when we started in the business, we could erect all the wind turbines with a helicopter. We'd lay them up on the ground. You could do 30 windmills a day by lifting with a helicopter. Now we need to bring in a 425-ton crane. The first uh, of 14 tractor trailers has a small crane on it that we use to erect the larger crane. And there you see the larger crane all assembled in a 300-foot boom. We'll use that crane. We'll take the tower sections. There's three of them. We lift them up into the air. And it's tricky because you can't do it on a windy day. So in a windy spot, you really have to pick your days <laughs> to do it. And uh, so we lift it up there, and we've got it up at the top. You see it attached to that nice foundation on the left, and on the right, you can see looking up the center of the tower, it's up 22 stories. These towers are important, too. In the old days, you could buy a tower separate from the turbine. You could design it yourself and save a little bit of money. But you really don't want to do that, because um, if you do it wrong, you get a hinge tower, which really isn't very helpful for creating electricity. Um, so now we're bringing in the nacelle. This has got a gearbox and a generator in it. We, it weighs about 100,000 pounds. We lift it up to the top. We set it on there. Now we're ready for the blades. The blades are huge. They're 37 and a half meters long. It's an articulated truck like a fire truck with someone driving on the back so you can make it around the various corners. There we assemble it on the ground at 77 meters, just shy of a football field size. We lift it up to the top. We put it in place and we're ready to go. So the only thing now we have to do is wire it up. That shouldn't be a problem. On the left you've got uh, uh, low voltage wiring, which are computer sensors and whatnot, and on the right it's the high voltage wiring. But this high voltage wiring is one and a half megawatts. So you've got to connect it right. If you connect it wrong, bad things happen. <laughs> so this is a turbine that was connected wrong and it just exploded pretty much. Anyway, if you do it right, there's a guy, happy, we've done it right. You get this gorgeous machine up in the air, 77 meters, it's rotating at 19 RPM. It supplies all the, all the power for about 300 homes. That single machine saves 2,700 tons of CO2 per year. And then we look here and you see the turbine there, the big turbine uh, with the smaller turbines in the background installed and ready to go. So that's how you build a megawatt class wind turbine. Thank you very much. <laughs>